Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh uh, in Panama City, Florida. We gather together today on the Sabbath day, the day that Yahweh chose to have his people come together and worship him or keep his Sabbath day set apart. <clears throat> today, I'm going to use the title, We Preach Messiah Crucified. You know, there's a lot of information, and some of it's right, some's wrong, and some's good, and some's bad, about the idea of a crucifixion for salvation. And with all the tradition that has been mixed in with it, it uh, has confused the issue and a lot of the truth is misinterpreted and a lot of the falsehood has been accepted as doctrine. And we need to just follow the scripture and see what he's talking about. In 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1, the Apostle Paul is addressing the Corinthians. He says, Call to be an apostle of Yahshua, Hamashiach, through the will of Elohim and Sosthenes, our brother. Verse 2, Unto the congregation, unto the church of Elohim, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Messiah Yahshua, call uh, to be saints with all that is in every place called upon the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, our sovereign, both theirs and ours. And he sends a greetings. Uh, he says, Grace be unto you and peace from Elohim our Father and from the Sovereign, Yahshua Messiah. You see, he recognized him as a sovereign. That means a king, a ruler. He's not just a passive personification in Scripture. He is the Ruler, He says, I thank my Elohim always on your behalf for the grace of Elohim which is given you by Yahshua HaMessiah. Now see, grace is what Yahshua gave us. And many people take that word grace and misinterpret it, misconstrue it, and say uh, because he did what he did, if they can believe it. Uh, he paid the price so you don't have to keep the commandments anymore. That's the general way most people understand it. But Yahshua uh, asked us from the beginning to keep the commandments. The very first thing that he gave us was commandments. But the word grace has been misconstrued. In verse 5, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. See, what, what we need to know about Yahshua is the knowledge and understanding of what he did. Even as the testimony of Messiah was confirmed in you. See, if we can't believe it, there's no confirmation there. And if it's not true, it's even harder to believe. But the thing that we need to understand is what the Scripture says about this. And many people try to separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. The Old Testament is a book that uh, has been closed, and the New Testament is what we're going by now. And then they have this idea uh, of the division between the Jews and the Gentiles. And so that further clouds what Yahshua wants the individual to do to understand. 
verse 7 so that you come behind in no gift see when you have this message confirmed you don't come behind in any of the gifts he says waiting for the coming of our sovereign Yahshua HaMashiach who shall also confirm you unto the end he is going to take care of his people to the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our sovereign Yahshua HaMashiach see what we know and what we learn and understand determines whether we're going to be blameless or not if we go through the world accepting traditions and being ignorant of what the scripture says uh, we're going to have to uh, share the blame but if we go into the scripture and find out what he's really talking about and what we are supposed to be doing in this day and age to uh, understand the belief that uh, Yahshua was crucified and was offered as a sacrifice it has to tie with the entire scripture he says in verse 9 Elohim is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Yeshua HaMashiach our sovereign now I beseech you brethren by the name of our sovereign Yeshua HaMashiach that you all speak the same thing and that there is no there be no division among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment and uh, he says in 1 Corinthians 1 23 but we preach Messiah crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block in other words what he's saying is unto the uh, traditions of the Jews the idea of a slain uh, Messiah is a stumbling block they had their rituals that they had uh, perpetuated forever ever since it was instituted but uh, unto the Greeks that is recognized by some as they're Gentiles because they're not Jews unto the Greeks it's all foolishness anyway the Greeks were the most religious people in history if you go back and look at them they, they had a God for everything if it was a leaf on a tree they had a God for it but it was foolishness to hear the idea of some Jewish boy dying on the stake and offering them some kind of uh, sacrif uh, sacrifice or forgiveness of sin but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks Messiah the power of Elohim and the wisdom of uh, Elohim because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called he just selects a few but Elohim hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and Elohim hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty the base things of the world the things which are despised hath Elohim chosen yea things which are not to bring to naught things which are see Yahweh has a way of doing things if we just simply look at what the scripture says about it he says and no flesh should glory in his presence but of him 
are you in Messiah uh, Yahshua who of Elohim is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he hath glorified Uh, let him glory in the sovereign. And see, what Yahshua has done, or Yahweh has done with Yahshua, is glorified him to be the salvation of the world. And so he had to go through this ritual and prevail in order to do it. Because the entire world has sinned and their only sacrifice for, for sin was blood and the temporary sacrifice was the blood of bull and goats to set the pattern that they followed in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 one verse where there is no vision the people perish but he that keeps the law happy is he and the word law is Torah it comes from the Hebrew word uh, from Strong's of 8451 Torah it's a precept or statute especially the Decalogue or the Pentateuch and you see this is one of the Understanding the, the Torah is one of the things that the world seems to have a problem with. If it's in the old Bible, the Christians say that that's, that's the old law. The new law is something else. And so we come to, uh, to the uh, point that uh, if we don't get, the, get it straightened out what Yahshua is actually doing, then we're in trouble. In uh, Matthew uh, chapter 26 and verse 10, 10, says, When Yeshua understood it, he said to them, Why trouble you the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Now this uh, scripture is ending of the episode where the woman came into the uh, meeting or supper where he was at and anointed him with oil and, and washed his feet and there was indignation among his followers his, his disciples said that uh, that was a waste of uh, money it should have been sold and because uh, it was so valuable and the money divided among a divided up among the poor but Yahshua said in this verse for you have the poor always with you but me you have not always in other words he knew he was fixing to go shortly but they didn't understand that yet he says for in that she hath poured this ointment on my body she did it for my burial See, he was uh, expecting his burial shortly. But it took a while to, uh, for him to make his disciples understand because it seemed like that uh, they had a hard time understanding and he had to take extra care and teach them what was going on. He says, Verily I say unto you, um, let me see. Verily I say, uh, for verily I say unto you, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told of her of a, as a, a memorial. And see, today we're uh, over 2,000 years past when it actually happened, and this memorial is still being told when we read, read the scriptures. 
in uh, verse 14. And one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests. And this is where the, uh, the story goes that he uh, is being betrayed to continue. In uh, Matthew 26 and 18, And he said, Go to the city to such a man, and say to him, The master saith, My time is at hand, and I shall keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Now this is a New Testament scripture stating that the master is going to keep Passover. He's setting an example. He's going to keep Passover with his disciples. And he chose a person that his disciples didn't know. And I don't know if the man knew him or not, but uh, Yahshua knew the man because of his position. So he sent him there. He said, and the disciples did as Yeshua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now, when the even was come, they sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now he's pointing that out to the rest of the crowd. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Sovereign, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. And the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe unto that man whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. So we see how Yeshua was mindful of every action that was uh, transpiring as it was developing. And it says, Then Judas went and betrayed him, uh, answered and say, uh, said, Master, is it I? And he said, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And so he symbolized this bread for a memorial. To, for them to understand that when they Im imbibed the, the uh, bread that they were symbolically partaking of his body for their sacrifice. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. See, this is symbolic meaning continuing. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This was to just symbolize that the blood he was going to shed on the stake was going to be for the remission of sins. Yahshua is going to accept that blood and honor his promise for the remission of the sins of the people. He said, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day, that day which, when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. Now he's saying that he's not going to perform that himself anymore, but he is going to offer some uh, instruction for it to continue as a memorial. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out uh, into the Mount of Olives. And Yahshua said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. And 
so he promised them that he was going to come back. Let's see. In Matthew uh, 21 and 1, And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, they came, uh, come to Bethage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Yeshua two disciples, saying, Go into the village over against uh, you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, a coat with uh, her, and a coat with her, uh, loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, uh, The sovereign hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Now, this is when he instructs the uh, disciples to go and get the, uh, the coat. And this is one of the things that people miss is they read it and it's uh, uh, I reckon it symbolizes something to them but wh what is the real purpose of him coming in on that coat? He's riding a coat. Now what he's doing is preparing himself for the as a sacrifice and the day that he did that is when it is uh, important because the day that he did that is the day that they select the lambs for the Passover and Yahshua is one of the lambs that's going to be for the Passover and not many people uh, tie that together uh, they talk about the uh, the uh, drama of, of the cross, the crucifixion. They speak about it all the time, but uh, they don't really tie it with the scripture that makes it relevant. He said uh, in uh, Exodus chapter 12 and 1. Let's read just a little bit here and, and get an idea. And uh, the sovereign spoke to Mose and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, and this is Exodus 12 and verse 1. Exodus 12, verse 1. Everybody should read this. And the second verse, it says, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, what is said here is this is the, the New Year's Day. It's not in December or, or January. It's not in the winter time. It's at the month that they slay the lambs. And it's going to be the beginning of the year. And then he goes into uh, several uh, scriptures on how to calculate that. It's the beginning month of the year, so uh, it's understood that the new year starts after the uh, vernal equinox, which is known as the first day of spring. And since they're on a lunar calendar, they use the sighting of the moon of the first new moon after the vernal equinox is the first day. And he says that this shall be the beginning of months. In verse 3 he says, Speak unto the, all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb. Now we have something to associate his ride on the donkey. That was the hour that they selected the lambs and paraded them to the temple. Uh, and it was four days before the uh, uh, Passover. And Yahshua directed himself to be our Passover and to come to his death on Passover, just like the lambs. 
So when we go back and read in the uh, in the uh, uh, Old Testament books, we begin to see the pattern that it forms. He says, And if the household is too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it uh, according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. And what they're doing is taking the lambs up. He says, take the lambs. And continuing in verse 5, he says, Your lambs shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now this is one of the confusions with most people using the word term evening, especially in America. Most people think evening is following afternoon, but it, the evening, erev, means night. It's the dark portion of night. And bokar in Hebrew is morning. And that's for the light portion. And he is explaining to them how this is to be done. And he says, And you shall keep it until the 14th uh, of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts of and on the upper doorpost of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Now this is the establishment of the Passover. Why it is even called Passover is going to be explained here. And he shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and uh, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And then there is a warning, eat not of it raw. Therefore, it had to be cooked, nor sodden at all with water. It was not supposed to be soaked or boiled, but roast with fire, his head and his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. In other words, he was put on the spit and put over the fire and roasted until the meat was done. And thus you shall eat it, with your loins girt, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. See, there was some uh, movement, the urgency of, of doing it right, urgency of doing it on time, and uh, doing it timely. And so it established the fact that has to be followed through all the way through to the death and burial of Yeshua. For I will pass through the land of Mitzrayim, that's Egypt, this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast, and against all the Elohims, or the gods uh, of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. He spelled out exactly what he said and then he signatured it with his personal signature. And when you see that little short phrase there, it's a, I am Yahweh, that means that he has taken possession of it. Moses didn't do it. Aaron didn't do it and the Jews didn't do it. Matter of fact, up until this time, there was not much said about the Jews because they were talking about Israel, the whole house of Israel. And before they left Egypt, there was 13 houses. <coughs> it turns out that there's 13, uh, 12 houses or 12 tribes of Israel that are warrior tribes. 
and one tribe is a priest tribe and that is Levi that's the reason Aaron was so important in the scriptures and when we understand that Yahweh chose Judah to be the lead tribe he was on the vanguard of the army when they came out his entire tribe was out front and you can follow the pattern as scripture goes through it telling the, the uh, arrangement that they were uh, bivouacked in for uh, sleeping and resting and when they marched they marched in that pattern in, in the same direction to go into the uh, wilderness of the promised land and there are several times that he describes uh, the arrangement that they were in Judah had Issachar and Zebulon his two brothers were partner tribes that made there was three tribes in a brigade and they were all camped to the east and Reuben had two tribes with him making three tribes and Reuben was described as the face of a man and that's his emblem and he had uh, Simeon and Gad with him and in the north on the other side of the temp uh, the tabernacle we had Dan and Naphtali and Asher was the tribes that was with Dan the three tribes in the north and on the rear guard coming from the west we had the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim and Benjamin and they were the tribes to the west and that's that description of the way that they were in the pattern moving into the wilderness and so they were speaking about the whole tribe the whole family of Israel including the servants the herders the ones that kept the livestock and every family that was born was in that brigade and then in the 14th verse he said, makes this statement and it's one of the sleeper statements that people can just read over he says and this day shall be unto you for a memorial a memorial what do we do with memorial days that's what this is that's what he's making the statement and then he goes on and say and you shall keep it a feast of, to Yahweh throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever now where would he change his statement and do away with his Torah one jot or tittle of his Torah do away with one thing so this was a very special day he was talking about and the people need to get this on the mind they need to go back and read everybody in, in, in the uh, uh, internet audience that hears this should take the time to open up the scripture and follow these uh, references and read this for yourself it's not just for entertainment but it goes on to say in the 15th verse seven days shall you eat unleavened bread even the first day you shall put away leavening out of your houses for whosoever eats unleavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day that soul shall be cut off from Israel now a lot of people's cut off and don't even know it and we're cut off when we are doing contrary or not doing what we're supposed to do and we're by abiding our time in a cut off stage and Yahweh is calling Yahshua is calling for his people to turn back to this he said in the first day there shall be a holy convocation the holy convocation is a zikrun it's a memento in other words it's a special uh, set apart day 
And that's the reason we, uh, when we say the first day of unleavened bread, that's the high day. It's a Sabbath in itself. Um, and in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That only shall be done to you. In other words, to make it easy for people who work all the time, you don't make a living on those two days. You take time and reverence Yahweh. And you eat the unleavened bread on the first day and then eat it continually through the week as you work. And then you have another uh, day at the end that you eat it. Continuing on verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Now see, if the people understood who he is talking to and what he's talking about, they could understand the blessing that they would receive if they just followed these uh, simple ordinances. And it's not hard when you understand it. The hardest thing there is is to make it up your mind that you're going to start trying to do it. And most people don't want to try to do it because they're afraid they'll make a mistake and they don't want uh, to do that. But the pr pr uh, main thing is that don't worry whether you make a mistake or not. Study it and do it. And if you do it wrong, study it, do it again. And if you do it wrong, study it and do it until you get it done. It might take us a lifetime, but it'll be worthwhile. But notice, he said that it would be an ordinance forever. So how can he do away with it? He cannot and will not. But he will at one time or another teach this population on earth the right way to go. In verse 18, Exodus 12, 18. In the first month of the fourteenth day of the month at even, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leavening found in your houses. For whosoever eats that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in your habitation, shall you eat unleavened bread. And see, he, he just went to great extent to describe this as an instruction for us to do. And we need to read it until we understand it. He said, Moses... Call for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. And so, when we go back and understand what day he was on there, it was at night time, at the beginning of the 14th day of Aviv, and on the modern calendar they uh, call it Nisan, but it's the same day, and that's when this action starts, and you count off the days. For Yahweh will pass through the and to smite the Egyptians and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your house to smite you and this was the salvation of the people in Egypt was that they would not lose 
the firstborn in their family. That was a promise. Verse 24, and he shall observe, uh, no, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. He is speaking to the generation that is hearing this. And when we read the Bible, when we read the scripture and read it in context, it's speaking to whoever hears and understands it. So when people think that it's not for them, they're not trying to understand it. If they read it and they get the message, then it is for them. It is for you. Many people will find out that they are of the house of Israel that they don't even know they are today because they're confused. And it shall come to pass, verse 25, when you be come to the land which Yahweh will give you according as he has promised, that you shall keep this service. See, keeping the service simply means remembering it. Remember, it is a memorial. And that's how you keep a memorial. There is no ceremony that you have to go about and do an elaborate thing to do to keep it. Just remember it. Now, if you want to sing a song and it helps you remember it, sing the song. But you're not required. You're only required to think about it by this statement. But things will begin to develop when you do, when you understand it. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean you by this service? There's always a question, and the kids will come up with it. What does this mean? Why do you do this? And verse 27, That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the heads and worshipped. Now see, when we think about the instruction to the uh, early house of Israel, our basically our ancestors he's still talking about it today so it would behoove us to understand what the scripture says and he didn't just stop in one uh, word he uh, I mean one chapter he went to other books in the book of numbers it almost redundant to what he's saying but it the point is it's in several books it's not just in one isolated book that's been packed away over the, there in the Old Testament that uh, the modern New Testament church don't have to keep think about that Numbers 28 and verse 16 and in the 14th day of the first month the Passover of Yahweh now, that, that is the day of the Passover. The next day on the 15th is the beginning of Matzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. In seven, verse 17, And in the 15th day of this month is the Feast. See, some people get it mixed up and think the Feast starts on the 14th. And some people... Uh, think that the Passover is on the uh, 15th and they get it mixed up but the Passover is on the 14th and Yahshua signified that when he had what everybody calls the Last Supper he calls it the Passover that he ate with his disciples and he going on uh, further he says seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten Numbers 28 and 18. In the first day shall, an holy, uh, shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no manner of servile work therein. And that's the word servile means labor for earning your living. 
we do service for whatever occupation we're in and so we're making our living but that day he says rest on it verse 19 but you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto Yahweh two young bullocks and one ram and seven uh, lambs of the first year and they shall be unto you without blemish now in this particular verse right here this uh, section of 28th chapter numbers he's speaking to the whole house of Israel not one individual household is going to be required to do all that it said but when the whole house does it collectively and the priesthood is employed in the right situation then it shall be done in verse uh, Nineteen, you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire, a burnt offering unto Yahweh, two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs in the first year. You shall, be, uh, they shall be unto you without blemish. And notice the operative word in that is without blemish. They have to be perfect lambs, and that's one of the reasons that Yahshua was chosen. He was the only perfect lamb. <laughs> And their meat offering shall be a fl uh, flour mingled with all three tenths deals. Uh, shall be uh, shall ye offer for a bullock and two tenths deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shall thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs and one goat and for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. And see what this is going through to set the patterns of, of the feast days. Yahweh is making an atonement for the people. And he is going to forgive their sins when all of it has come to completion. In verse 23. And you shall offer beside these uh, in the morning which... Uh, is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner you shall offer daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice uh, by fire and of a sweet savor unto Yahweh. It shall be offered beside a continual burnt offering and his drink offerings. And on the seventh day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile works. And see, he, what he's doing here is explaining the entire week, beginning with the first day and the seventh day of that feast. And it don't always come on the same day of the year. It is calculated in the calendar, beginning with the first new moon of the vernal equinox, after the, uh, the year gets started. And uh, w one more here. Uh, Verse 26, he says, Also in the day of the first fruits you shall bring a new meat offering unto Yahweh after your weeks be out, and you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall do no servile work. In Deuteronomy, it's a, almost a repetition. It's Deuteronomy 6 and uh, verse 1, and it begins, Observe the month of Eve. Aviv and like I say the modern calendar is Nisan if you want to use that Nisan uh, it says keep the Passover unto Yahweh your Elohim for in the month of Aviv Yahweh your Elohim brought you forth out of Egypt by night and notice what he said by night he started off in the night time and when they rolled through the next day, there's a gap of time that mo most people miss, but there was a spoiling of the Egyptians. And it was told of Abraham when he was uh, uh, having his conversation with Yahweh. When Yahweh blessed him, he said that his people would be in Egypt for 400 years, but they would come out with plenty. 
and you have to dig some of the scriptures but you can see where the Egyptians when it come time for them to go was willing for them to go because they had a funeral in uh, every household and the firstborn had died and there was turmoil and they was ready to get rid of the Israelites so they gave them this what is known as the spoils and and it started on that first night Verse 2, Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto Yahweh your Elohim of the flock of the herd in the place which Yahweh shall choose to the place his name there. And you shall eat no unleavened no leavening bread uh, with, uh, with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread through therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou came out, uh, came forth out of the land of uh, Mitzrayim in haste, that you mayest remember the day when you come out, uh, come forth out of the land of Egypt, all the days of your life. Now, that was a perpetual memorial. The first generation was supposed to keep it all the days of their life and teach it to their children and teach it to the children's children. And in fact, Yahweh is teaching it to the present generation. He says, and there shall be no leavening bread seen uh, with thee in all thy coast seven days. And this is the uh, memorial for this. Is just simply getting rid of all of the yeast and, and leavenings out of your house and eat unleavened uh, food throughout that week. And it's as simple as that to keep it. But you're not just keeping it for a burden. You're honoring Yahweh because he asked you to do it. And it teaches us humility and it teaches us obedience and so that's one of the reasons that we're supposed to do it he says neither shall there any thing of the flesh which is sacrificed the first day at even remain all night until the morning so the sacrifice that they put on at right after sundown in the first part of the night they put it on the fire and roast it when it got done, they began to eat it and in command, by the commandment of Yahweh. And what was left over, everything, it says, do this. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of your gates, which Yahweh, your Elohim, gives you, but at the place which Yahweh hath, uh, shall choose a place in his name, that there shall... Uh, thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even at the going down of the sun. See, that, when what he's talking about here is what happened in Genesis 1. Evening and morning are day one. The more, uh, evening, the time started with the darkness. The first night and the first day is one what we call a day the evening and morning and it's tied to that he says the Passover at evening at the going down of the sun at the season that thou came forth out of Egypt and thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which Yahweh your Elohim shall choose and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto your tents now this is after they got into the land of, uh, of uh, out of the land of Egypt into the wilderness and he was giving them a training service and this is what he was teaching them and then he continues in verse 8 Deuteronomy 16 8 six days shalt thou eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to uh, Yahweh your Elohim thou shalt do no work therein you see keep, just keeping a, a, a holiday is just don't doing any work if you have to do anything would be maybe read a little bit of the scriptures to your children or just do whatever it takes for you to eat that's what was allowed 
Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee, beginning with the week from the time that thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Now this scripture right here happens during the week of Passover, or the week of unleavened bread. And it deals with the uh, Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath during that week. That's when the numbers starts to count. And the morrow after the seventh Sabbath of that week, you number seven Sabbaths. That's one for each week for seven weeks. And he says, And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto Yahweh your Elohim <clears throat> with a tribute and a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto Yahweh your Elohim according to uh, Yahweh your Elohim has blessed you. He has given the blessing, and that's what they give. And, uh, and so they need to understand that that's all the commandment is. It's not a hard thing to do. It's not a burden. The main thing is, is just learning the secrets, the timeliness, and what he wants us to know. In verse uh, 11 of Deuteronomy 16, Thou shalt rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim. See, this is a, 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 a request by Yahweh, an instruction to rejoice before Him. When we come to these services, mostly what we do is rejoice to be able to be here because we fellowship one with another, we enjoy one another's uh, company, we discuss the scriptures together, and the people that don't get to come regular, when they do come, we get to visit with them, and, and we have visitors just about every week from somewhere or another and it's just a marvelous thing and the whole thing is that we rejoice that's all we're obligated to do is rejoice on this day or on the day of the high sabbath which is the first day of unleavened bread or the last day of unleavened bread or any other of the feast days it is rejoicing and it goes on to say thou and your son, and your daughter, and your manservant, and your maidservant, and the Levite that's within your gates, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which Yahweh your Elohim hath chosen to place his name there. You see, it, it's all done to bless Yahweh and praise him. Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondsman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe to do these statutes. And see, our forefathers was a bond, bondman in Egypt. And some people say, well, I ain't never been a slave. Yes, you have. If you live in this world and breathe there and work on a job and furnish a living and do all the obligations you are, are to do, you are a slave. And if you do it with sin in your life, you're a slave to sin. And you need to get rid of the slave, slavery to sin. Verse 13. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. Now that's the feast that's over in the fall of the year. And it coincides uh, with the same pattern as the feast that we do in the spring of the year. And so uh, we will get into that one later. But at this time... We want to urge everybody to think about how Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection are tied to these feast days, letter, uh, uh, step by step, letter by letter. And we know that it makes sense when we do that, that he would die and why he had to die on the stake. And that we preach the... Messiah, the resurrection of the Messiah, because he is the one that made, uh, made the sacrifice for us to come out of our sin. May Yahweh bless and keep you.